All right, this video will be for SOLIDWORKS part ACC3, parts one, two, and three. Uh, these will be the directions to get this completed, including the drawing along with mass properties. So again, I'm gonna start back in my Schoology homepage. This time I'm basically starting in uh, what period 2A. You'll see on your homepage for CAD classes, a beginning SOLIDWORKS folder at the bottom. Left click in that folder, and you'll see all the parts we so far have created. I want you to slide down a little bit until you find the ACC3 dot pdf or acc3 part 3 pdf the first one is going to be the part that we're going to start building from and then the second one is going to be the drawing that we're going to create i want you to click on the acc3 dot pdf now again it's going to load into schoology and at this point we cannot access this file we cannot see the 3d parts we don't see the directions because in this case in order for this file to function we have to actually download it and open it in adobe acrobat so up here in this right corner, I'm going to hit the word download. When it pops up about where it should uh, chosen to open, I'm going to open with Adobe Acrobat Reader and say OK. Now at this point, you're going to see it says 3D content has been disabled. That is OK because we're going to go over here now and say Options, Trust this document one time only, and turn it on. Now what we got here today is we are going to create this unique part. I'm actually going to change the lighting on it so you can see a little bit better. This part is not, again, done with cuts. It's an optical illusion. We are actually going to use a tool that we rarely get to use, but this will be kind of the showing of it today, which is a lofting tool. So the way we're going to, have to really kind of build this is we're actually going to build this lower part here that you see, this lower thickness. And then we're going to have to add on to it this upper part here and then blend the two down. And once we're done with that, we'll add in all of our cuts. We'll do a cut back here, two cuts back here for triangular shapes. We'll need to add in the slot and we'll finish off this hole with what's called a hole wizard. So a lot of new things in this part that we have not done before. Now, looking at this, we need to make sure that we are starting this in metric, as we can see right here, MMGS. It's gonna be uh, two decimal places. And again, our material will end up being copper. Okay, and it says here a note, all holes and slots are through all unless otherwise sh or unless shown otherwise. So going into this, we're actually going to start this part on our top view. So when I go into my new part, I'm going to go ahead here and we are going to start this from a top plane. So I'm going to come back and reference this in just a second, but I want to get back into SOLIDWORKS first, do a file new and start a metric part and say, okay. Now we're gonna go over here to the left and we are gonna start from the top plane. So I'm gonna highlight the top plane and then go up to my sketch tab and turn on sketch. And what will happen is that the top plane will now become normal to my screen and the origins turn red indicating that we are currently in a sketch mode. Now I'm gonna draw this with a line tool. And what I'm gonna basically draw here, going back to here is I'm gonna start with my, um, my origin down here in the left corner and we are going to draw this outside shape just the way you see it i'm going to ignore all the cuts i just want the outside perimeter here and then what we'll do is we'll add our definitions of our our dimensions here and then we're going to extrude it up okay so we're going to go back to solidworks and begin creating this shape i'm going to use my line tool start at my origin and pull to my right i'm going to pull up at an angle and pull back Pull a horizontal line to the back here and close this part up. Hit escape to turn my tool off, F key to center. Now, I've got to get this thing fully defined, so I need to add some dimensions. So going back into this drawing, the only dimension I really need to know is from this corner to the back, which in this case is 86. I need to know from this tip to the back, which will be the letter A, which is 125. So let's go ahead and add those two on. So I'm going to start by hitting this side right here and making this 86. And then from this point to the back, make that 100, 125. Okay. Now I also need to know how, from the bottom to the top, how wide this is. So going back into SOLIDWORKS here, I'm going to look for that width and that is B. Okay, and B says today on this part will be 70 on the part number one. So going back to here, I'm going to click on this line here and make this 
70. All right, now, the problem we have right here is that we need to make these two lines equal to each other, okay? Because this should be right in the middle. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back, just double check, I'm going to make this line here, control key, and this line here equal to each other. Now, looking at that, it's fully defined, but this doesn't look right, okay? Because this should be lined up with the center right over here. So if I were to draw a line across this center mark here, or the midpoint, this point should be up higher. Now, what happened here is, again, just like the previous problem, we need to make sure when we get these two angled lines that SOLIDWORKS did not automatically put in the perpendicular. In this case, it did. So in order to get this to break, I have to left click on that perpendicular symbol, turn light blue, and hit delete. Now these are still equal to each other, and that's good. Now the only thing I need to do now oops, sorry, is go in here, and now I need to add in from here to here, a distance of 35. Now I've got it fully defined. So at this point what I can do is I can actually go ahead, oh actually take that back, I don't need the 35. What I need to do is I also need to make this bottom line equal to this top line. Equal. And now they'll be fully defined. So both this line here and here are 86. So now at this point, what I want to do is I want to go to my feature toolbar and I do extruded boss base. Now I need to extrude this up a specific distance. So looking at this front view, I want to extrude it. Again, change the lighting to bright lights. I am right now on this bottom face right here. I want to extrude it up to this line right here, which is letter D. So I'm going to extrude this first part up 23 millimeters. So going back to here where it says 10, highlight and make it 23. I'll hit my check mark. Hit my F key. Now again, we see it as a blue shape. That indicates we have no material. So we're going to go over here to the left to our design tree. We're going to right click and do an edit material. Minimize my steel folder and under the copper alloys, we will expand it and look for the word copper. Once I highlight the word copper, I will hit apply and close. And now my part looks like copper. So now looking back at our part here, what I want to do next is I've created this lowest base right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that top face and we are going to draw another shape very similar to this very first shape we did. What I'm specifically talking about is I am going to come here, hit that top surface and we are going to draw a shape that outlines this part right here. And then we'll extrude that up and then blend the two surfaces together. So going to SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to highlight this top face, start a new sketch, spacebar, normal to. I'm going to turn on my line tool. And I'm going to basically draw a smaller version of what we have already on the screen. Now I don't want to get caught on this midpoint right here. So I'm going to actually be a little bit shorter than that. Draw at an angle. Draw back up. Draw back to the edge and draw down. Now, I have three of these lines in black, but I still have to define this. So I need to know how long this is here. I need to know from this point back how far this is. So going back to my drawing here and blowing up on it, I need to see this length of this line right here is 42. Um, yep, 42, and that's pretty much all I need to know for right now. So I'll go back to here and turn on my smart dimension. Make that dim uh, dimension there 42. I'm going to hit escape. And I'm going to make this bottom line here a 42. Control key and this top line up here, I want to make them equal. I also want to make this angled line here and this angled line here equal. And now I need to know what the distance from this point to the back is. So going back into my PDF file from this point. Now this is the one that's hard to see. It's actually 56. I know that line doesn't show, but it actually should be right here. So I'm going to go back to SOLIDWORKS with my smart dimension and dimension from this point to this back line 
make this 56. Now that I see it's fully defined, I'm going to hit my spacebar, isometric view. Now I need to extrude this up. I need to extrude it up and I need to look at this view right here again. Okay, my right side view. Turn my bright lights. Now if you look at this carefully, we've already extruded this D. And I just drew my surface or that last sketch on this line right here. Now we need the total height of this to be C, but realize I've already extruded it D. So I actually need to do an extrusion of C minus D. So for part one, that will be 56 minus 23 for a total extrusion of 33 millimeters. So I'm going to go here and go to my features toolbar, do an extrusion and extrude that up 33 millimeters. Hit your check mark and your F key. Now, looks like an odd shape. Okay, someone may say it looks like a, kind of like a boat. All right. Or a train. I don't know. You make a decision what you want to make it look like. But what I need to do now is I need to take this upper surface here and I need to blend it down to here. And the tool that allows us to do that is on the feature toolbar and it's called Lofted Boss Base. If you left click on there, what it wants to know is the profiles we want to work with. Well, the profiles I want are this top surface here and this surface down here. Now, as you can see, all I see are two blue surfaces and two green dots. Nothing else has happened. And the reason being, in order for the loft to work, I've got to get these uh, green dots separated from each other. So in this case, I'm going to left click and drag this lower dot right here from corner to corner. And now you'll notice that I've got them further apart. The solver started creating a shape. And what it's basically doing is saying, okay, we're going to take this surface here and we are going to blend it from this corner here over to this corner. That's why you see this slight twist. Now I'm going to grab this one more time and click to here. And now that they're perfectly apart, what SOLIDWORKS has done is going to blend this upper surface exactly down the way we want to with straight lines. Now, it doesn't matter if it's in the center. I could also do it this way here. As long as these two green dots are away from each other on a straight line, your loft will look correct. As soon as you see it looking like this shape here, hit your check mark. And there is the two or the wedge piece you were looking for. So if I go back into my PDF file, there is that shape right there. Okay, this is the only way you can make this shape happen is through that loft. Now what I want to do is come back to the side right here. We're going to cut a rectangle across. Then we'll come to the back and cut the two triangles. So I'm going to look at this view right here, and I'm going to create a rectangle on this side that is 42 millimeters long, 10 millimeters tall, and it's cut through all. Going back to my SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to highlight this face, go to my sketch tool, start a new sketch, do a space bar and a normal two. I'm going to turn on my corner rectangle, and I'm going to click at that corner and pull up into my right. I'm going to smart dimension this to 42 millimeters long by 10 millimeters tall. And you'll see now that the rectangle is fully defined. Now at this point, I'm going to hit my space bar and go to my isometric view, go to my features toolbar and do an extruded cut that will be from blind to through all. We want to cut it all the way across. I'm going to hit my green check mark. I now want to hold my middle mouse button down and rotate to where I can see the back side of this part. When I see it, I'm going to left click so it turns blue, go to my sketch toolbar and hit sketch, do a space bar and a normal two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw two triangular shapes that we're going to cut out. So I'm going to start on this top line and go to this corner, come down and pull back up at a diagonal. I'm going to repeat that line tool on the, on the other side. Same thing from there to the corner, pull down, and back up. Now these aren't defined. So what I have to do is go back here and look at this backside view here. And I'm going to turn my bright lights back on so you can see it. But it looks like the distance of this top line is D. 
the distance from this tip to the bottom will be D. And then we also have to know that this top and this top are equal, and this point here and this point over here are horizontal. So let's go in here and put those numbers in there. In this case, D will be 23. So I'm going to turn on my Smart Dimension tool and go to this top line and make that 23. From this point here to the bottom line, pull to my left and make this 23. Now I'm going to turn off my dimensioning tool and I'm going to hold my control key. And I'm going to click on this top left 23 line and this right hand top line here and make those two equal. I'm then going to take this point right here control key and this point over here and make those two horizontal. And at this point, both of these triangles are fully defined. So now what I got to do is I'm going to do my spacebar isometric view. And we need these to be cut in. So I'm going to go to features, extruded cut. However, I need to look at how far I need to cut them in. So I'm going to have to come back into this top view again. And it looks like the distance from this back to this front cut is 20 millimeters. So going back into my SOLIDWORKS, instead of 33 right here on my cut extrude, I'm going to put 20 and hit enter. Now I'm going to hit my check mark, and now the back two cuts are done. So going back to my PDF file and looking at my three-dimensional view, I now have the rectangle cut from the bottom and my two triangular shapes cut out the back. So it looks like the next thing I want to do is click on this top surface, draw this slot, and cut that through all. So I'm going to go back to my SOLIDWORKS and highlight this top surface. I'm going to turn on my sketch toolbar, spacebar, normal two. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a special tool called a slot or a straight slot tool. It's right below your corner rectangle tool. If you click on this tool, it is a three click process to create a slot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start towards the top of my part here and left click number one. I'm gonna pull a line straight down, approximately about the same distance to the other side, and left click number two. Now I'll pull left or I'll pull right, does not matter which direction you go, but I'm gonna add a little bit of thickness to it and click left click number three. Now at this point I can hit escape and now I've got to define this with some dimensions. So let's go back to our PDF file and look again at this top view. Now, looking at this, first thing I see is that this is a radius of five and that the center of this, of this slot to the back is gonna be 34. I know these dimensions are kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna go ahead with my smart dimension and I'm gonna dimension down here to a radius of five and from this, back line here to this back line here will be 34. Now, from the center of the slot right here to the side right here is gonna be B divided by four. So that's gonna be uh, B, which is 70 divided by four. Now, if you don't wanna think about the math on that, all you have to do is click on this point here to this point here, and all you have to do is type in the formula with the number. So in this case, B, 70, division sign, 4, and hit enter. Okay, now it says 18, but I do know it's a fraction, so I'm going to come over here to the none document and make it a point 0.1. So that distance right there is 17 and a half. Now if you look at the dimension again, from this center to this center is B divided by 2. So I go back to SOLIDWORKS, I'll go from this center, to this center, bring it on out here, and put in B, 70, divided by two, enter. Now at this point, this is fully defined. So what I'm gonna do now is go to my space bar and do isometric. Go to my features tab, extruded cut, and drop this from blind to through all, and hit my check mark. So again, going back to my PDF file and looking back at my original part, we are very close to being done with this. I've got my slot. I've got my cuts. All I have left to do is put this in right here. Now, this is what we call a hole wizard. 
Okay, in this case right now, I'm gonna walk through just how to set it up using the information in this dimension right here. But in class, I'll go over what each part of these mean. It takes a little bit of time to understand that. Now, all I need to understand is that there's a diameter 8.5 that is being basically drilled down 40 millimeters, that the thread size that we're gonna use for this hole is an M10 by 1.5, and that we are gonna thread this hole down 20 millimeters. Now, this is a threaded hole. Okay, so we call that in engineering, we call that a tapped hole. So when I go to my hole wizard, I'm gonna use a straight tapped hole and put these three numbers into the definition. So going back to SOLIDWORKS, I'm gonna to go to my features tab and turn on the hole wizard. Now, you have a whole bunch of hole types we're gonna use. The three most common that we will face in this class are going to be a counterbore, a countersink, or a tapped hole. So I'm going to click on the straight tapped hole. It's going to ask me, do you want to keep your custom sizing? I'm just going to go ahead and hit reset it all. And then we just got to make sure we hit some key elements here. The first one is our standard. The standard is what units you're drawing in. If you recall, we are drawing in ANSI metric. Okay, there's ANSI inch. We will talk about these other ones over time. But the one I want you to make sure you have clicked on is it says ANSI metric. This is going to be a tapped hole. The size of this hole will be the M10 by 1.5. And you can see it right here in order. I want you to click on this box that says show custom sizing. Now, in the end condition, I want you to put it to blind. Okay. Now, if you go back to this, this drawing here, there are three numbers. There's an 8.5, a 40, and a 20. Well, if you go back into SOLIDWORKS now, you will see three boxes. The first one should say 8.5, the second one should say 40, enter, and the third one should say 20. Once you have those, just double check that you have uh, the near side that this is not activated. Okay, we wanna make sure near side countersink is cleared. Now, once you have this information, I want you to go to the Positions tab. It's going to tell you to pick a spot. I'm going to pick right here on this face. And what you're going to notice, you have a silhouette of a hole following your cursor. As soon as you're approximately in the middle of this box, left click. Now, be careful because your tool is still active. As soon as you've got that one in there, hit Escape one time. Click on your space bar and do a normal two. Now, if you look at this, this asterisk is in blue. It's because it's not defined, and it says underdefined. We have to turn our dimension tool and define this. So looking at our drawing over here, we have to dimension from the center to this bottom over here, B divided by 2, and from the back in 10 millimeters. So going back to SOLIDWORKS and turning on my smart dimension, I'm going to dimension from that point to this line, I'm going to make that 10 millimeters. And then from this point to this line over here, pull back. This will be B, 70, divided by 2. And now you'll notice that this point turned black and it says fully defined. Once you see that, you can now go ahead over here to the left and hit the green check mark. Now this is the hole. Okay, in this case, what the dotted line indicates is that is the thread. SOLIDWORKS saves memory by not necessarily putting threads inside the hole. It gives you a dashed line to indicate this is a threaded hole. And we'll see this more frequently as we go through further problems down the road. Now I'm going to do a space bar and an isometric view. And at this point, my first part is done. So I'm going to come up here to the top and do a file, save as, go into my H drive, under CAD and into my 3D parts folder, I'm gonna name this part with caps lock on, ACC3, shift underscore, part one underscore, my last name, and hit enter. Now, go to your evaluate tab, mass properties, and you should see your mass on this one as 2507.05 grams. I'm going to go ahead now and hit print. But before I print, I want to verify this is printing on letter size paper. So go to your properties, 
go to your printing shortcuts and make sure paper size is letter. If it's showing at 11 by 17, drop this down and hit the word letter. Verify also under paper quality, it says letter. Both of these should be letter. When you see that, hit OK. Make sure you're printing to the correct lab, in this case L108, and hit OK. As soon as you've printed, go ahead and go grab it from the printer, bring it back to your desk, and then go ahead and close out your mass properties. Now, from here, we got part one done. So now, like we've done with the other parts, I need to go make some modifications for part number two. So our A, B, C, our A, B, C, and D are all changing. Okay, so we got to be aware of where we did those. So the first thing we got to realize is part A and B are from our top view, which is our first extrusion and our first sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and do SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to click on my design tree, boss extrude number one. And now what I see is I see basically my A, B, or excuse me, my A and B. A is right here. That's 125. And according to this, it's supposed to be now 98. So I'm going to double click the 125 and make it 98. I'm going to go back here and look at the 70 I see back here. Double click it. I'm going to make that 50. Now we also have to change letter C. And if you recall, letter, or excuse me, letter D is this height. Letter D now is supposed to be 15. And if I go back to SOLIDWORKS, well, there's the old letter D right here. Instead of 23, I'm going to double click and make that 15 and enter. Okay. Now, you'll notice this looks really bad. This part doesn't look correct. Don't panic. Okay, we're okay. Go back to my isometric view. I'm going to go to boss extrude number two. Nothing needs to change. Oh, actually, this needs to change. My 33 is from doing, looking over here, if you call, is C minus D. Well, C in this case is 44 minus 15 is now 29. So I'm going to change this number 33 to 29. I'm going to hit my rebuild at the top. Okay. Loft doesn't have to change. Cut extrude number one does not have to change. That will stay at 42 and 10. But cut extrude number three does, or two does change. If I do a normal two to that, You'll remember that our triangles are D and D. Well, D in this case now is 15 and 15 again. And to get this to take shape, I will go up to my stoplight and hit or left click. Spacebar, isometric view. Okay, now cut extrude 3. The 34 is not going to change. But if you call of these numbers, the 17 and a half and the 35, well, this 17 and a half was B divided by 4. Well, if we look now, that is going to be 50 divided by 4. So if I double click on this, I will type in 50, <coughs> division sign, 4, and hit enter. And then I'll take this, and this was B divided by 2, double click, 50 divided by 2, and hit enter. Now you'll notice nothing changed. So what I have to do is go back to the top where I see the stoplight and left click. And now I have my slot back in place. Now the last thing that's incorrect is this hole back here. And if you look at your design tree, that is this last, last branch. If I left click on it, you'll notice all these numbers. The only one I'm concerned with is this one back here, this 35. If we recall from the drawing, this is B divided by 2. So if I double click on it, I will take B, 50, and divide it by 2. Enter. And it goes to 25 and now puts it back in the middle. At this point, if you click on the screen, okay, you can now save this because this now part is done. This is part number 2. So I'm going to do a file, save as, ACC3, part 2, underscore your last name and hit save. Now, let's go to our mass properties by going to the evaluate tab, hitting our mass properties, and looking what our weight is now. I am showing 1,142.99 grams. So again, I'm gonna to go to print. 
verify under my properties that I'm printing on letter size paper, which I am, paper quality, letter size paper. If either of these boxes do not say letter, please make that change now. As soon as they both say letter, hit OK. Verify your printing to L108 and hit OK again. At this point, go ahead and go grab your mass properties for our part number two, bring it back to your desk, and then close out your mass properties screen. So at this point, we have one more change to make. That is for part three. So we're gonna do the same exact thing we just did. We're gonna walk down our design tree and we're gonna change the key parameters to these new numbers. A at 110, B at 60, C at 50, and D at 20. <coughs> So, going back into SOLIDWORKS, I'll go to the first boss extrude. Now, we see that this is my A here, my B here, and this is my C over here. Okay, so now, or is that D? That's D. Okay, so we're going to go and change that to 110, 60, and 20. So, this will become 110, 110, enter. This is going to become 60, enter. And this is going to become 20. Enter. I'm going to go ahead and hit my rebuild just to make sure everything took place. And now I've got the first part done. I'm now going to go to Boss Extrude 2. Now the 56 and the 42 will not have any effect. Those are staying the same. But this 29 has to change because if you recall, this is now C minus D. Well, C is 50 minus 20, which means instead of 29 that it's currently at, we must change this to. 30. I'll hit rebuild to get that to take effect. Now, cut extrude number one. The 10 and 42 will stay the same. Extrude cut number two, though, does change. That is our back cuts. These numbers were D and D on the bottom over here. So I'm going to hit my space bar, normal two, and I'm going to double click this 15 now and change it from 15 to the new D, which is 20. And this 15 to also 20. Now to make it take effect, I go to the top and hit rebuild. And now that back part has been done. Spacebar, normal to. So now I need to make sure I get my slot and my hole in the correct places. So cut extrude three is my slot. The 34 stays the same, the radius five stays the same, but if you recall, this is B divided by four. Well now B is 60, so I'm gonna do 60, divided by 4, which should equal 15. Let's click on that again. This now is B divided by 2. So that would be 60 divided by 2. To make it take effect, I come to the top and hit my green or my rebuild sign, the stoplight, and now this is centered back where it's supposed to go. The last thing I need to change is this hole in the back. And if you recall, I left click on that, that is this dimension here, which is B divided by two. So I'm going to left click, 60 divided by two and hit enter. Now it hasn't moved, so that tells me I need to come to my stop sign and left click. And at this point, part three is now done. So now we're gonna do a file save as, ACC3 part three, underscore your last name and hit save. Now let's go up to our evaluate tab, go to our mass properties. I see at 173807 and I'm going to hit print. Now I just want to make sure that I have this going to the correct printer and then I'm checking the properties that I am on letter size paper under both paper quality and printing shortcuts. As soon as you see that hit OK, hit OK once more, and close out. So at this point, this is the part we need to put into the drawing. So once you have your, all three of your mass properties, come back in here and do a file new. Under your new SOLIDWORKS document, open up a GHSB metric and say OK. Hit your F key to set up your paper. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this file here because now I am done with all these dimensions. So I'm gonna close this out, go back into my home page, 
And under beginning SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to look for the ACC3 part 3 PDF file. Now again, for me, I like to download it so I can have it full screen. So I'm going to hit my download button, open with Adobe Acrobat, say OK. And now I have it full screen by maximizing and closing off these arrows. So this is what we're going to create, a front, top, right side view, and an isometric. Now the isometric in this one will stay at one to one. So going back into SOLIDWORKS now, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my part is open. Now if you do not see ACC3 part 3 in here, go ahead, open up Browse, and find it in your folder. In my case, I have it open, so I'm now going to go up here to the blue arrow and left click. Now, as we've done in our previous drawings, we're going to make four clicks here. The first one is we're going to click the center box. We are going to come in here and make sure we have a check mark in preview. If it's already there, like in my case, I don't have to do anything. However, if it's missing, you must left click inside. Display style, we are going to click on hidden lines visible, box number two. And then finally, we're going to come down to scale. And in this scale, we don't have to do anything special because it's already at one to one. If it needs to be changed, you would drop it to use custom scale and come pick a different scale. In our case, we're just going to go with what we got. And now I'll come out here to the left hand corner of this paper. I'm going to left click and pull up, left click and pull to my right, left click and pull out a diagonal. As soon as I see my four views, to deactivate the tool, I will hit Escape. I'm going to grab my isometric view and bring it in. Leaving this at one-to-one, -one, I am going to left-click inside of it and add color, shaded with edges. Now again, I want you to get rid of any of these extra black lines you see. So I'm going to left-click on this one and hit Delete. Left-click on this one and hit Delete. Left-click on this one and hit Delete. At this point, my views are almost done. I do want to make sure before I get going that I do have a center mark for that slot. Because if you recall and you look up here at this top view here, we have a center mark in here. So to make that happen, under my annotations toolbar, I'm going to come over here to the right and hit the word center mark. Now, slots are kind of unique. If you were to just click on one of these arcs right now, it's going to drop the center mark dead center of that slot. However, we want it at the ends with a line in between. To change that, you come over here to the left where it says slot center marks, and you hit the one that says slot ends. And now the slot mark or the center marks went to the ends of the slot. Now, to get the line that is in here, you come up here to the insert options and do a linear center mark and now the line will drop in. Once you see that all in there, hit your green check mark. Now, at this point, my drawing is ready to be dimensioned. But I'm first going to start by always putting in my title because that is commonly forgot about right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my title in here. In this case, I'll go back and look what the title is and it says SOLIDWORKS ACC Three, part three isometric view. So I'm going to go back into my drawing, turn on my note tool, drop it underneath here, change my font to 12, bold, underlined, and centered, caps lock on, type in ACC 3 dash part three isometric view. Hit enter. <laughs> We don't have to put our scale on here because it's already one to one and it's the same as the other. So all we have to add in is material is copper and mass equals. If I recall correctly, it was like 1738.06 grams. If not, whatever the number is on your third sheet, make sure you have that and put that in there. Do not leave X's in that point. Hit your green check mark to the left. Going back up here for a second, I'm just going to identify this underneath as so and call that good. Now, at this point, I'm going to go back into here and I'm going to start looking at my views and getting dimensions put on. So I'm going to start with my front view and add the 10, 20, and the 42, and a 20 and a 50. So I'm going to come back into SOLIDWORKS, 
go to my drawing, smart dimension, and I'm going to start with this line here will be 10. Get the arrows to the inside. From this line to the bottom line here will be 20. This uh, line right here will be 42. This right side here will be 20. And from the very top to the very bottom will be 50. So at this point, this view is done. It matches up the drawing. We look good there. So now I need to move towards my top view. Now this one's got quite a few. So it looks like I'm going to start real slowly. I'm going to add all these ones on the side first. So I see a 10, a 20, a 34, a 42, the 56, the 86, and the 110. So going back to my drawing, going up to my top view, I'm going to start from this circle here to the edge and pull down is 10. Keep these pretty close. From this line here to this back right here will be 20. From this center line to the back will be 34. From this corner right here to the back will be 42. Uh, from this point right here to the back will be 56. From this corner here to the very back will be 86. And then from the very front of this to the very back will be my 110. Now, again, if you have to start moving things around, you can. But right now, my spacing looks pretty good. I'm going to stick with it right here. Okay, so now going back to the PDF, I've got all these in here. Now I'm going to add in these ones to the right. So I'm going to dimension from the arc to the edge to get 15, from the upper arc to the lower arc for 30, and then from top to bottom to get the 60. So going back to my SolidWorks drawing, I'm going to go from this lower arc to this edge here. I get 15. I pull to my right. I will flip the arrowheads. I will then hit the upper arc to the lower arc and get 30. Then from this top line to this bottom line to get 60. I will also then add the radius of 5 at the top. So I'm almost done with this one. Now. The next thing I'm going to do is go back and look at the two numbers here. So this distance from here to here will be 20, and then from this circle to the side will be 30. So going back to my drawing here, from the circle to the edge, oops, from the circle, uh, wait, let me go back and look again. Oh, from that circle to this bottom edge will be 30. From this edge here to this edge here will be 20. Now, the last thing I got to add is this dimension right here. Now, this is going to be used with a special tool. We actually have a dimensioning tool that will allow us to get all this information in one shot. So, I'm going to go up here into my SOLIDWORKS again, drawing, and we are going to use what's called a whole callout. When you click on that, all you have to do is click on the circle, drag, and pull through. Now you'll see most of the information is in there, but it doesn't quite look, look right. For instance, this number is supposed to be eight and a half. Well, if you come up here to the, your left where it says call uh, diameter right here, it says right now diameter is nine. That's that number right there. You can drop the none document to a point one. And now I have the diameter 85. Now it says down 40, M10-6 by, uh, by 20. If I look back here, I know this is through all. Um, we can go ahead and change that. So what we'll do instead of down 40, we are going to go here. Actually, we're just going to go ahead and keep it right there because officially that's what it is. It is down 40. Okay, by M10 by 1.5-6H at a depth of 20. So at this point, I consider this a completed dimensioning of the drawing. Turn off my tool. And now all I have left to do is come over here to the right and add in my title and do all my title blocks. So looking at the title on this one over here, I see uh, SOLIDWORKS part drawing. I'm just going to put SOLIDWORKS drawing, ECC3 part 3, scale 1 to 1, our name, date, period, and check by. Going back into this, I'm going to call this again SOLIDWORKS. 
drawing ACC three part three. Click outside. Scale one to one. Drawn by. Double click there. First initial, last name. Move it towards that middle. Today's date, 11-2-19, period 2A, and then check by myself. Center that up. I'm not going to worry about these numbers in the corner yet. We'll do that later in once we get into our actual assembly projects. At this point, my drawing is completed. I'm going to do a quick file save. Go ahead and save it as you see it. Make sure it is in your CAD 3D parts folder and hit save. Now, let's go ahead and print this. Do a file print. Verify under your page setup that it is on a 11 by 17 B border. And it should be defaulted there. So I'm going to say OK. Go ahead and hit OK to print. When you grab it from the printer, take your three mass property sheets, put them in order. Staple them in the upper left-hand corner of this paper on the back side. Fold the paper in half. Place it in the collection box. And go ahead and continue on to the next part. At this point, you're done. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate, hesitate to ask.